Your grown folks are first born sons, wrapped them in swallowing clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Good morning, everybody. Thank God for, for the opportunity to come at this hour to share a word with, with us, knowing that God is still in the blessing business. He has blessed us beyond me. As we close, as we close this year, we come, amen, to the end of another year uh, as far as our Sunday school lessons are concerned. We are in lesson 13, which would end this last quarter, um, the year 2021. We greet you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to all of his children to each of you in your respective places, knowing that God is still in the blessing business. He blesses us beyond measures. Blesses us far more than we, than we bless ourselves. And we give him all the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanksgiving to each of you in your respective places. Good morning, everybody. Sister and brother clergy, deacon and deaconess, take that off coming through that I want to come through this okay give me a second everybody let me just turn this off okay that take care of that as we come this morning amen uh, I pray that your Christmas has been wonderful that you have enjoyed each other as well as the Lord. Um, we greet you by the name of him that sent him. To my wife who is, amen, still hopping. Thank God as well as it is, however. Our lesson, our lesson this week uh, for December the 26th, 2021. 2021. Um, it's lesson number 13. The subject of this lesson, Consequences of Justice. Background passage in their home chapter 1, printed passage, Nahum chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, verses 6 through 8, and verses 12, 13, and 15. Um, the key verse, God is jealous, and the Lord revenged, revenged. The Lord revenged and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversary. And he revenged wrath for his enemy. Nahum chapter 1 and verse 2. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you now for, for this opportunity that you've afforded us with so that we are able to share your word with your people. I pray, Lord, that in sharing, our sharing will not be in vain, but that you and all of your wisdom will open hearts, minds, and understanding. To each of you that might be joining us virtually, we thank you. Amen, for sharing, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to share in the teaching of God's word. And I pray it will be a blessing in your life. To each of us, we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This lesson, this lesson is a lesson that, that is a book that we hardly deal with. It's a little, amen, one of the little minor prophets. And that's, that's when we talk about major and minor prophets, there's no difference, no different in the prophecy of Nahum than it is in Jeremiah. The, Jeremiah is a major prophet. Nahum is a minor prophet. The difference is the length of time they prophesy. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Um, Nahum's prophecy was very short. Jeremiah's prophecy was long, so he was considered as, as a major prophet. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, those are, those are major prophets um, because of the length of time they prophesied. Let us get to this lesson. Let us get to this lesson. It won't be long this morning. I don't plan to be long this morning. The consequences of justice. We're going to do the introduction, and we're, we're going to jump right into this lesson. Uh, the introduction. Like the prophet Obadiah, who focused on one nation, Nahum messages focuses on a foreign nation, Assyria, 
While the prophet's message may seem stern, it comforts the people by proclaiming that God will destroy the cruel Assyrian. And we'll talk about that, amen, in, in just a bit. They defeated the northern kingdom of Israel and it elicited fear in Judah. Assyria was at the height of its influence at the time of Nahum's prophecy. The city of Nineveh had fortification that, that would allow it to withstand a 20-year siege. However, even as the walls were thick and it was made from natural material, mud and brick, mud brick, and was susceptible to erosion by heavy rain, river flooding, or intentional destruction by water. Nahum prophesied of its destruction, and it says it's in Nahum chapter 1, verse 8, chapter 3, verse 13 through 15, which was difficult to envision at that time. However, it would come to pass less than 50 years later. The Tigris River overflowed, overflowed, flowed. The flood waters destroyed part of the immense wall. The Babylonians invaded through the hole in the wall and the wall, plundering the city and setting it on fire. To be fair, the Assyrian had been dealing with uprising and revolts from the Babylonians for at least 20 years. They was tired of being oppressed. Nahum did not prophesy in a vacuum, but delivered his message after receiving a word from God about the geographical shifts that were occurring, that were occurring. Justice is coming. The consequences of justice is our lesson. The Assyrian, the Assyrian. As we get into this lesson, many of you can remember the Assyrian uh, where uh, Nineveh, and that's how the lesson started, where Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Assyria was the nation that captured Israel, that took Israel captive. Um, this, this, this is a long history. Nineveh uh, took Israel captive and put fear into Judah. Um, I think it was Jeremiah's prophesied and said to, to Judah, you see that, that the Assyrian has already captured your sister Israel, and you still, you still, amen, are not turned to the Lord. Um, let's, let's think about it. How do we become people who witness persevering hope in the face of our world's injustices? How do we hold fast to hope for victims of injustice who wait to be rescued? Moreover, what about those who perpetrate injustice? What is our hope for all who commit the horrors of abuse in our world? What about our hope? Justice, the consequences of justice. Now, this, this seems strange. Justice is, is, is punishment for wrongdoing if we look at it. Um, and if that's the case, all of us would, would Amen. Would be destroyed because all of us have done wrong. So what keep us from being destroyed? Uh, that's a question I want to ask. But but the thing that I want to talk about, uh, and, and hopefully we'll get it in this in this first outline. I've read you the introduction um, and and uh, Nineveh. You remember remember many of you remember Nineveh because of Jonah. It's where Jonah was sent to preach. This is what Jonah was sent to preach. Let's look at this first outline. Like I say I don't want to be I don't want to be very long. Uh, let me get my, my time piece. All right. Outline number one: this, the description of God. I'm going to read the verses, and Deacon Brian is present to read the exposition. Um, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Echo's light. Echoes height. God is jealous, and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversary, and he revenges 
wrath for his enemy. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and in the cloud and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Mm, man, okay. Deacon Brian. The title verse of Nahum identifies its content as an oracle, a book, and a vision. It also identifies the general topic of a series and gives the prophet's briefest terms and identification. The name Nahum means comforter and fits the message of the prophet appropriately. His prophecy of the coming destruction of the oppressor Nineveh, Nineveh bestowed comfort for the oppressed people of the ancient Near East who were in distress under the heavy yoke of the tyranny, tyranny of the tyranny and barbarism. Nahum describes God as slow to anger yet judging the guilty. He avenges the oppressed and comforts the powerless. The first two verses of Nahum message set the entire book tone. The book emphasized the destruction of Nineveh. But it also stresses hope for God's people. Nahum based his hope on the presence of God in the world. The oppressive nation would be removed because of the sovereignty of God. The prophet was not an unbashed op uh, op yeah. optimist. Rather, his optimism came because of God's character. The God who is slow to anger and great in power will not leave his people. Mm. He will provide for their need. The character of God means the evil cannot triumph in this world. Having opened with the characteristics of God that would dominate this book, now we turn to the other side of God. Yes, he is jealous, vengeful, and angry. However, he controls these for the Lord. He controls these for the Lord is slow to anger, literally. Long with no. Many people mistake the Lord's patience for important empathy. Though he is patient, he is not weak. Mm -hmm. God's hot anger burns because he is great. Thus, he can be slow to respond and patient, even with the even with the tyrant. Now, who uses the traditional confession of faith to let us know that God is slow to anger against their enemies' sin, and He is with Israel's sin. Israel will ultimately see Assyria destroyed. And God wills his, the powerful elements of nature who are at his obedient service. Mm. Description of God. The description of God. That's what Nahum does in his first outline. He gives us a, a description of God. But let's talk about uh, why Nahum is writing. Why Nahum is writing. Um, Nineveh, which is the capital city of, of the Assyrian, the Assyrian nation. The Assyrian nation is the nation that, that took Israel, the ten tribes, captive. God called Jonah and sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach to the Assyrian, giving them, um, I believe it was three days uh, to repent of their sin. Jonah goes and preached. He really didn't want to go because of the fact that that. Uh, the Assyrian held his folks captive. So we get like that sometimes uh, because because you you have mistreated among them. I I you know I, if I could reach out and help you, I I, I won't do that because of past relationships. Well, here's what's happening. Nahum comes along and points out the fact that that though God had had saved uh, Nineveh after the preaching of Jonah. But then they turn around. They turn around and go right back to what God has saved them from. Kind of remind us sometimes. Kind of remind me of us sometimes. God saves us. And we say to God sometimes, Lord, if you just get me out of this, just help me through this. 
They said, kind of like a drunk, kind of like a drunk. A drunk man with, with a hangover swears, if I can get over this hangover, I, I won't get drunk no more. But as soon as the hangover is gone, he turned right back to drinking again. Well, that's kind of like us sometimes. We say to God, Lord, if you get me out of this jam, just help me. Help me get out of this. I won't do this no more. As soon as God gets you out of whatever you are in and you find yourself on your feet again, then you turn right back to what God. This was the nation of Israel. This is how the nation of Israel, amen, had fared, amen, ever since God delivered them out of Egypt. Sometime up and sometime they were down. And, and God often, time and time again, would provide somebody to deliver them. God would deliver them and they would slip back. So here, Nahum says that God is going to take, amen, vengeance on Nineveh. Nineveh was a cruel nation. They, the, Nineveh was, was, was cruel. And God despised the cruelness of anybody. Uh, Jonah preached, and, and they repented, but it didn't last. It didn't last. They right back at their old way. So here, Nahum said, Nahum said, the time is coming, the day is coming, when God is going to take vengeance on, amen, Nineveh. And he points out, or on the Assyrian, he points out, don't, don't worry about it. And, he's, and here's what he said. God is slow to anger. God is slow to anger. And, and many of us ought to be so thankful that God is slow to anger because if he were not slow to anger, amen, many of us would have been destroyed or many a nation would have been, this nation really would have been destroyed had not God been, been slow to anger uh, because I believe, I believe that justice for this nation Amen. According to God, not according to man, is on the horizon. That's my that's my belief. You, amen. We started out with with a pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, when it starts slacking up, then there come a Delta variant, and it took back off. Here, Amen. Under the new leadership that's in Washington, uh, it went down. Got it down, way down. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, here come, here come something else. Here come something else. I, I, and nobody hadn't told me that. None of the authorities or the doctors or people in, in, in power. But then the man that I got, got contact with is more powerful than all of them. Something, I, and I believe that, that amen, justice for this nation is on the horizon. I listened, I listened, as I was riding last night, I listened to uh, um, the, the Reconstruction Days. I listened to part of it and why there was, I mean, why there needed to be Reconstruction and what caused the Reconstruction. And, and a lot of the, the guests that was on that program acknowledged the fact that justice still does not prevail in part of this nation, in a great part of this nation. Uh, just, justice just not prevail, but I'm, I'm here to say that, that God is going to bring justice. Uh, Nahum described him as slow to anger, slow to anger. Um, God is, is slow to anger, and he got great power. He got great power. And what he said was the lesson saying, don't take God slow to anger for um, with his weakness, his weakness. We're going to go to the second outline. It won't be long. I know everybody is still hollering days, and, um, and, and I, I want to um, get on out of the way. Okay. Right. Whenever he gets ready. When he gets ready, and and there's one one song says, uh, just because he doesn't do it right now doesn't mean he's saying no. He's he, he, God is long. God is patient. God is long patient. He has been patient with us. He has been really patient with with us. Um, and and a lot of time, we take that for granted or for weakness. The Lord's care of Judah. The Lord's care of Judah. Uh, 
Uh, this is our second line, outline, still in Nahum, chapter 1, verses 6, 7, and 8. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemy. God's going to wipe them out. This is what, 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 amen. The Lord, Nahum is prophesying, and if you follow this lesson, Nahum is saying in this lesson to Judah, Judah, Judah is the southern kingdom, and, and, and the, the, the nation of Israel is divided. There's a northern kingdom, which consists of ten tribes, and there is a southern kingdom, which consists of two tribes. The southern kingdom is made up of the nation that's to bring Christ into the world. That's Benjamin and Judah. Those are the two tribes. Everybody else is northern. Everybody else belongs to the northern kingdom. So here in this, this outline, God's care for Judah. God's care for Judah. Don't, I mean, Judah was so fearful. Judah was so fearful when the Assyrian captured Amen. Israel. And, and when we studied, let me just say something, brother. When we studied, you notice the, the Israelites, Israel was captured by the Assyrian. God would not allow the Assyrian to captive to Judah. But because Judah would not heed to God's warning, and this is a lesson for us, because Judah would not heed to God's warning, he eventually allowed another nation to, to take them captive, take them captive. The Lord's care for Judah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to ask Deacon Bryant to, to read some more if you don't mind it. Mm -hmm. Verses 4 and 5 are not included in our printed text. However, they prepare the reader for the rhetorical question in verse 6. Mm. Nahum makes the red flames in, in, in our picture of God's consuming wrath. Mm -hmm. God's very presence makes the mountains quake and the hills melt away. Mm -hmm. Those who have seen the power of God know that no one can stand before this awesome God. Amen. These verses remind us modern readers that nothing can stand before the Lord. We tend to think that our technology can save us and that our scientific research will deliver us from evil. Mm. They who knew that the mighty army of Assyria could not stand before God. Amen. Verse 7 demonstrates the Lord's goodness does not stop him from pursuing his foes. He cares for his people. The Hebrew term care for means literally to know. God wants a personal relationship with his people. Okay. Such knowledge is the basis of a relationship in which he can truly show care and concern. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. Whatever his foes plot, the Lord will bring to the dull end. Will bring to a dull end. Mm -hmm. The day of distress comes to all people, and the Lord is good to all who trust in him. His trusting people need not to fear when God comes in the storms and clouds to wreak his vengeance, to wreak his vengeance on and wrath on the Syrians. The Lord is a refuge, literally a stronghold in the day. Yes, sir. Place. The Lord himself is the fortified place where people flee in times of danger. Yes, sir. Protection and security amid danger are a part of God's agenda for his people. <clears throat> the first two words of verse 8 could be connected with verse 7 or verse 8. Translation different. The NIV verse translation indicates the type of judgment that will come for those who oppose the Lord and his people. Mm. The flood might remind those who read Nahum's message of the destruction of the wicked at the time of Noah's flood. The phrase connects the passage with the earlier reference to God drying up the sea in Nahum 1-4. All 
Amen. Amen. God's care, God's care for Judah. The same care that God taken for Judah with the promise that the Assyrian, Assyrian the Assyrians, I've already said, was cruel. They were, they were so cruel. He reassures, he reassures Judah. He really in, in verse 7. In verse 7, we, we, we quote part of it often. We quote part of it all. This is God's reassurance to the to the Amen, to the to the nation of Judah. To the nation of Judah. And that says, Amen. The Lord is good. A strong hope in the day of trouble. In the day of trouble. Now that we quote that, but when we look at it, what it really is saying, Amen. God is a hiding place. God is a refuge. If you're in trouble, but you also got to, Look, look at the end of that. Look at the end of that. Look at the end of that line. You have to put your trust in him. And this is this is Nahum's message to Judah. God isn't going to, as long as you trust God, he is going to be your stronghold in the day of trouble. But you got to trust him. You can't just haphazardly uh, live any kind of way. That's been our problem. That's our problem. That's our problem. God blesses us. And he sent message after message to, to remind us, to, to remind us. And yet, yet, amen, he still stands as a stronghold. Still, amen, as, as a hiding place, as, as a place of refuge for those in trouble. If, look at that, in the end of verse 7, them that trust, them that trust him. Everybody doesn't trust the Lord. Everybody doesn't trust the Lord. Lord's care for Judah. So, so, so the prophet remind them, remind them. God sometimes put our, our, amen, um, our punishment off. Put, he put justice. He causes justice to wait some time. Causes justice to wait some time. Because if by right, if by right, and if it were not for mercy, Justice would have already overwhelmed us. It would have already taken hold. And I'm talking to, about our spiritual life now, uh, or our daily life. Um, that that God's God's justice, God calls it to wait. Calls it to wait. Um, not that He can't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, and I think if you're not understanding of what God um, told you to do, you can get confused. Okay. And yes, sir. Start trying to say, man, it's the technology, but in, in all things, it's God. I, 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 and whatsoever, whatsoever, even even within the technology, technology can be good, and it is good. But men, because it's in the hands of men. Uh, it, it, it makes a mess sometimes. And they cause it, amen. Um, and okay, they, we used to use a word called hoodwink. They will fool you. They, they will make, and, and, and I've, I've watched how technology can work. The thing that can be done with technology. And, and a lot of time, folks that has that, that stuff in their hands misuse it. And in their misuse, they mislead God folk, and we follow. We follow after. And uh, this is what, what Nahum is saying to Judas. Don't act like Israel. And, and I know, let me just say, when, when, when we're talking about Israel now, we are not talking about all of the Jews. And the reason we're talk, not talking about all the Jews is because the nation is divided. There are two nations. Israel is a nation all by itself. Ten tribes. On the other hand, amen, there's another nation called Judith in the land of Judea. In the land of Judea. This, this, this is so important, especially this time of year, because when you go back and, and, and read uh, Isaiah and Luke, they talk about uh, people living in darkness. Part, part of, amen, Galilee was so far from Jerusalem with them believing that God rest, 
resided in the temple, they looked at that part of the nation as being in darkness just as well as they look at the Gentile. That's you and me for being without Christ. But, but this, amen, uh, Isaiah reassured us. He reassured us. And so did Luke as it came to pass. Uh, this is a powerful lesson. This is, this is, amen, good teaching. If you don't get anything else out of this lesson, read verse 7. Now, and I want to read it. I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He, he protects those who take refuge in him. Refuge, hiding place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the King James says, King James says, amen, them that trust in him. The Revised Standard Version says, amen, those that take refuge. And it's the same thing, just different wording. It's different wording. Uh, because you cannot take refuge in him unless you trust him. Amen. And this is so big. This is, this is amen, uh, the relevant part of this lesson to you who live in, in this nation, in, this, in, in Georgia, in, in, in Ashburn, in Turner County. Um, I mean, you got to trust him. And if you trust him, you can take refuge in him. You can take refuge in him. He will be, amen, a stronghold. Now, what, now, when you think about stronghold, what comes to your mind when you think about stronghold? What is it about a stronghold? Uh, stronghold is that, is that, I remember from the military, it's, it's that covering. It's that protection. It's, it's, amen. It's the thing that, that makes, amen, uh, that keep you, not only from the elements, but from the enemy. That's, that's a stronghold. Stronghold. We used to call, some, some places they call them a lean-to. It's a stronghold. God is a stronghold. And I need somebody to grab hold to this, that know for sure God is a stronghold. Nahum said, even in the day of trouble, even in the day of trouble, I don't want to, amen. All right, let me go to the next outline. If there's no comment, any comment? Oh, okay, all right, the next outline, this next outline. The Lord's word for Judah, Nahum chapter 1, verses 12, 13, and then verse 15. Thus says the Lord, though they be quiet and likewise many, Yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more, my Lord. For now will I break his yoke from off thee and will, will burst thy bonds in sunder. Verse 15. Behold, upon the mountain the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publishes peace. O Judas, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vow, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. God promises to Judas, to Judas, thus says the Lord, though they be quiet, likewise many, Yet thus shall they be cut off, shall be cut down, when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. God is, God is, is speaking to Judith. Uh, Nahum talks about, about the Assyrian, but here he, he reminds Judith that God is going to cut off the Assyrian. Um, and I, 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 I like that I had the time to go back and look at how cruel, how cruel. They're just, they're enemies, but, but, but the Assyrian was cruel. They, they, they were, uh, amen, as, as my grandma used to say, just for the devil of it, they would cut off a man's nose just to spite his face. They was, they was cruel. They would do foolish stuff to the, to the enemy. And God said, God said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. Amen. I, I would not, amen, allow them to afflict you no more. As a matter of fact, the yoke that they've got on you, I'm breaking it. The yoke is that burden. 
that burden. If you go back to the first this lesson, the lesson began, I believe, uh, with the burden, with the burden of, of Nineveh. The burden of Nineveh is the yoke that's on Judah, uh, on God's people. The yoke. Um, when we when we teach and preach, sometimes teachers often say, "Amen," to those those who are being taught. The yoke of God is easy. As a matter of fact, Christ says it is. Yeah, in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, God's yoke, the yoke, that burden, that burden. When we think about a yoke, especially in the days of this lesson, that heavy wooden harness that went around an oxen, amen, to give them, amen, means to pull heavy loads, to carry heavy loads. That's what, that's what, amen, Nahum is saying to Judah. God going to lighten your heavy load. I, now, 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 that's a sermon. That's a sermon all by itself. How many believe that God will lighten your heavy load? He, yeah, yeah, he's, amen. This, this, amen. The Lord's word for Judah. Lord, stand still. Verse 13. For now will I break his yoke from off you and will burst the bond in sunder. God promises. As not, you're going to read that last, Amen. Although the first half of verse 12 referred to Assyria, the third person, mm -hmm. the Lord spoke directly to Judea in the second half of the verse. Okay. The Lord has afflicted Judea in the past. Judas. 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 Has afflicted Judah in the past, but he would afflict them no more. One must not overlook the first part of the statement in a hurry to hear the good news of the second. God is the one who afflicts as well as the deliverer from the affliction. Assyria had not had not had a free hand in gaining control of Judah. God had God had made them his rod of oppression and discipline. Now Assyria would not have a free hand in maintaining control of Judah. God would intervene and deliver his people from affliction by afflicting Assyria. In place of Judah's judgment would be the demise of the oppressor. God never is insensitive to the suffering of his people, although they may think he has forgotten them. In Psalms, verse, Psalms chapter 119, verses 6 and 71. The yoke commonly referred the oppression to the oppression and force of devotion. Breaking the yoke indicated freedom from bondage mm -hmm. and servitude. Amen. People in the ancient society ambiguous, unambiguously understood the particular Pretoria, Pretoria. language and the meaning of the verse. The yoke referred to the wooden bar placed over the ox neck and the bond of the shackles indicated the leather mm -hmm. strap used to attach the yoke to the ox's neck. In Isaiah chapter 52, verse 2. Breaking the yoke bar and snapping the bonds allowed ending the oppression of, of Judah. Verse 15 is a powerful reminder of the good of God in all ages. The Christian can the Christian cannot help be but reminded of the of the message, beautiful feet, that help to bring the good news of life in Christ. The message has an urgency about it because it proclaims the timeless message of peace and good tidings. Mm. Ne nevertheless, the message referred to the historical events that were fulfilled, that were fulfilled soon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Break another yoke. Break another yoke. Uh, two things in this lesson. Uh, God is a hiding place in the day of trouble. And if you're troubled, if you're loaded, if you're loaded down with heavy burden, amen, God is a yoke breaker. God is a yoke breaker. But you got to let him. You have to let him. Um, let me point out a couple of things in, in, in the lesson. We, we read Judas. Judas. There are two things. There's, there's Judas, which is the people. And there's Judea, which is the land. Uh, Judas and Judea. Um, Nahum reminds, reminds uh, Judas, remind Judas, 
God is not going to break the yoke from off his head. Mm. God is going to rescue and not allow that even nation Nineveh uh, to have rule over you. Rule over you. Any question? Any comment? Uh, and God do it. He, he let them know that, you know, he was the one that did it. Okay. But, you know, you're going to give credit to some. To some I, and, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing because uh, Solomon says, Solomon right. that's what men do. Mm. Men will brag, amen. But God does things, amen, so that men can have no credit. There can be no credit like the coming of Christ, like the creating of Adam. Uh, if men could, they would take credit for it. Uh, and, and, and doing so, Solomon said, when they do that, they only tell you the good side. They don't tell you the evil part. They don't tell you the hypocrite or the crooks they've been. Um, this is a powerful lesson. This is a powerful lesson. Nahum reminds us uh, of the consequences of justice. And the consequences of justice is the justice that God is going to rain down on Nineveh, on, on the Assyrian, on the Assyrian. Um, God allow your enemy at some time to overwhelm you. But if you stay faithful and trust God, he will make those same enemy become your footstool. Remember this as I'm re reading. Uh, Nahum reminds us that all nations are under divine judgment and that evil will not go undisciplined forever. Even though Assyria served, served for a time as the instruments of God's wrath, that does not mean Assyria will go unpunished for its gross cruelties. Nahum is not concerned with the Babylonian invasion looming in the not too far distant, not too far distant, not too distant future. He fails to understand that even as there will be freedom from the Assyrian, the Babylonians are no better. Still, he expresses a shout of victory for God has acted. Now, now, now here's, here's what it says. In, in our life, in our life, a lot of times God will deliver us from one storm. He will take us out of the trouble that we are in, but also be careful because another storm is always brewing. And the reason I can tell you it's always brewing is because Satan is still in charge. And, and, and whenever God will deliver us, God will deliver us, and if we don't remain faithful, and even when we remain faithful, Satan, amen, will attack somehow, somehow. Uh, Nahum was not concerned uh, with writing about Babylon, the coming destruction of Judah, but he was concerned about, amen, the Assyrian. The, they, had, they had been cruel to, to Israel, and he was reassuring Judah, amen, the, the hold that the Assyrian might have on you. God's going to break that yoke. He's going to let you be under bondage. Under bondage. Reaffirm the rele relevant message of this week's lesson through a song with examples of how God delivers justice or listen to a song that will allow you to reflect on your life this year. Find a song that will, that will calm you down, clear your mind for the new year. Mm. They home worship by respecting God's vineyards, trusting God's patience, resting in God's omnipotence, and waiting for God's good justice. As this year comes to a close, be thankful that God has helped you become more acquainted with his righteousness. They home words in 1 and 15 points to salvation and peace beyond the Assyria, even the Babylonian deliverance. In addition to salvation in Christ, this verse offers peace with God. This is what follows life in spirit. Let this be an encouragement to share the good news with all that you meet. That's our Sunday school lesson for, for this Sunday. It's the, last, it's the last Sunday school lesson in this year. In this year. 
when we do this again, if the Lord allows us to do this again, it'll be in a brand new year, um, the year 2022, as we, as we come to a close. As we come to a close, let me just thank everybody for being part of that. Do you write any comments or questions or even announcement? All right. We thank you all for taking part of the lesson. But let me let me make this quick announcement, and I, I, I'm kind of hesitating about making it because we've not talked about watch night. We are planning watch night. I've met with the other four pastors, the other three pastors, um, Pastor Spears, Pastor Pays, Pastor Gain. We've kind of talked, um, and we are planning watch night at St. Luke so we, we can spread out. We're going to start late. And we're only going to take, we're only going to do two hours so it won't be so, um, be together for so long. We're going to start at 10 o'clock and shortly after 12, once we do the crossover sermon, then we'll go home. Um, and we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it when I, when I dismiss. Thank you all for, for, amen, if you can, come back and join us at 1130, amen, for worship. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you for this period of study. Praying that, that time has not been wasted, but that you have open hearts and minds and understanding. Have us to know that God is a stronghold in a day of trouble for those who will trust him. He is a rock, amen, in, in a weary land. He will break the yokes, amen, that sin has cycled us with if we trust him. Be ever mindful, sisters and brothers, of this word of God. Nahum reassures Judas. That God is not going to allow the Assyrian to take them captive, not counting the fact that in a few years, amen, the Babylonian would do just that. Once God take us out of one storm, often, amen, another storm is brewing. Keep trusting God. Hold to his unchanging hand, and everything will be all right. With the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning, sister and brother. We pray your blessing in the Lord that this year wind down that God will carry you safely into the new year. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Join us at 1130 if you can.